Welcome to Uncommon, a Liz McMullen documentary series. It was a pleasure to spend some time with Emma, who is a student at Mount Holyoke College. Emma Elizabeth Shoshan volunteers as a social chair for Mount Holyoke College's jazz ensembles. She has spent the winter of 2016 producing the ensemble's spring show, The Big Broadcast. Outside of her work in the music department, Emma majors in film studies with a focus on collage and Weimar cinema. Her most recent work, Silence is Our Enemy, Sound is Our Weapon, was featured in the 2016 Five College Film Festival. We are in Pratt Music Hall. Yeah, Pratt, yeah, Pratt Music Hall. And do you practice down in, down here? I don't practice down in here often. Um, I do come down here often because um, the costume room is down here. Um, but I don't practice down here often. What music things do you do? At Mount Holyoke, I'm involved in the jazz ensembles. I am a performer with the vocal jazz. Um, and I am on the board for the jazz ensembles as a whole, so I am social chair and I am one of the executive producers for the big broadcast this semester. Um, I play the piano. Um, I have for about 10 years. Uh, that's it. Have you um, heard of the postmodern jukebox? Yes, I have. Love. It's fantastic. I love postmodern jukebox. Uh, what um, postmodern jukebox uh, particular songs? You, you dig. What's your favorite? Oh, I love the, the one that they did. Um, it was a Taylor Swift song. Uh, Boys only want love is torture. What's that one? I don't know Taylor stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't either. Um, I love Creep uh, with I Haley love Creep. Reinhardt. Yeah, really great. Um, oh, and Oops, I Did It Again. And now I'm trying to remember. Um, she just got the Grammy for Best New Artist, blanking on her name, all about the bass. Oh. That is wicked good. And there are three different vocalists, and mm -hmm. they both are, all three are incredibly strong, incredibly different. And my father, I showed it to him because he's, you know, involved in a lot of different things in his life. And he goes, that's not going to last very long because he's looking at, you know, the egos that yeah. are going to be involved. But it, it was it's just so fantastic. Uh, what's something that you would like people to know about studying music at Mount Holyoke? It's really hard. Uh, studying music in general is very difficult um, because people who study music are very difficult. Um, and they're not always the most socially adept. They're often inept. Um, and in academic spaces, a lot of your education is dependent upon the people who facilitate that space. Um, and so it's, it's often difficult to find your place in those spaces if you don't know exactly um, what you want to be doing and who you want to be working with. Um, are there different personality types uh, according to instrument or vocals or genre? Um, not in an awful stereotypy way, but um, obviously, for example, and this is not to do with music, um, I was at Smith talking uh, to a person who's a doctor um, of the biology department, and I was talking to them about what are different students like, mm -hmm. and they said that, you know, I have a, I have a character in my novel, Unspoken, um, Jennifer Organdy, and she's Smithy, and she's a vet, uh, she's a veterinary, pre-veterinary um, program. And what Chris at Smith said to me is that the vets tend to be the most chill. Mm -hmm. Like they're much more grounded, more practical, less stressed, less kerfuffled. Um, but when you get uh, to the pre-med folks, they mm -hmm. are tightly wound. Yeah. So let's say... What kind of person is attracted to doing jazz vocals? Uh, angsty people. Um, jazz r really uh, draws in people who are having a hard time. Um, and that, that's just the nature of the style. It's the nature of the groups that perform it. Um, but a lot of people in the jazz ensembles are not the... Are, are, not the most put together. 
Um, and that's why it sounds good. That's how it sounds good. Because um, it's just a cacophony most of the time. And that's why people listen to jazz. Um, but it's, you know, it's one of the things that makes it harder to be, to be a part of it. It makes it more worth it some of the time because you know that it was difficult. And powerful. And powerful. Um, one, because I'm a one-up girl, um, no, I'm not. One of the more extraordinary and extremely successful uh, female pianists, Alicia Keys, um, there, are, there are a lot of musicians who are not, have never attended any music-oriented thing. Some of them never trained at all, um, but she went to Juilliard. Mm -hmm. And I find her phenomenal. Like I, you know, and what I love is, because it's hard to do two things at once, to sing and play an instrument. Mm -hmm. It's like tapping your head and rubbing your tummy. Absolutely. Um, but I really admire her. Uh, what, what kind of personalities are attracted to classical piano? Um, well, it, it really depends. Um, people who perform, like, do you mean... Classically trained pianists. Um, classically, classical like Baroque and oh. um, like uh, older perform um, composers. Well, that's something that I enjoy. Um, it's, I would say, sometimes it's people who are disorganized up here, and they enjoy the organization, the complex organization of classical music because. Most of classical music, it's uh, an experiment that classical pianists were experimenting, and that's how they, you know, made created techniques that are used in contemporary piano. Um, and sometimes it's people who uh, are organized up here, and they are just expressing that organization in a different way. But I, I'm one of the disorganized up here, organized down there um, people. That's why I like it. One of my personal experiences when it comes to music, um, classical music, symphony, opera, um, and ballet accompaniment, um, I'm a big crybaby. Oh, you yeah. know, I am, um, like, I'd be terrible if I had to sing uh, during certain things. Like, I, you know, uh, sopranos can make me weep. Um, uh, don't get me started about, like, Nessun Dorma, uh, which is Pavarotti. Oof. His uh, granddaughter, I was 15, uh, performed the same song, and it's um, up online, and she's phenomenal. And you can tell that's his grandbaby. Yeah, I've seen that. You have? Yeah, I have. Wasn't that just... It's really... It, it's wild. It's absolutely wild. And she, and honestly, looking at her, I thought she was considerably younger than 15. Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, and usually uh, that doesn't happen, for example, like... Billy Joel, uh, phenomenally successful. Mm -hmm. um, his daughter also goes into music but doesn't have the level of success. Um, uh, Enrique Iglesias had a rough go of it because mm -hmm. um, his father was incredibly popular. But I'd say about five to ten years into his career, he finally found his own niche and mm -hmm. finally was creating hits on his own and people were forgetting his father and remembering him. Mm -hmm. Uh, what attracts you to, what is attractive to you in modern music, um, pop music or um, something that is not jazz, like something that's yeah. more... Um, I really appreciate well-composed and arranged pieces um, because you, if you can like simplify the madness of you know, something really big, and make it something that is digestible. I, I think that's that's really wonderful. I um, I think I like things that are lyrical. I think that the poetic nature of you know of word like of words is really important to communicating information through music. Um, so it, it's really powerful when you listen to something and you can't get the words out of your head mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the time people can't get the music out of their head. It's, it's the notes, it's the song, it's, it's the beat, it's the rhythm. But when the words stick with you, when the meaning of the piece sticks with you, um, 
that that's really powerful, really evident. What type of music engages the most part of your brain as a listener? As a listener? Um, what I mean is because there are some things that I listen to mm -hmm. that it's intangible to, to try and quantify why your brain reacts to it and find like things that you find to be your favorite that may not hit somebody else's brain and ears the same way. Mm -hmm. And I, there are some types of music, some um, musicians, uh, whether they be um, classical or modern or mm -hmm. pop, and it just it engages so much of my my brain beyond just the pleasure mm -hmm. centers um, that what kind of music makes you feel that way? Uh, film scores, um, because I am I'm a film studies major, and one of the reasons why I went to film studies is because of my his background in music, um, is that when you are a musician, when you're a performer, um, you have to have a lot of different hats. You have to know a lot of different things. It's a very empathetic um, path when you perform in front of people because you, you have to feel your own feelings and feel everyone else's feelings. And, well, you don't have to, but it's so much more beautiful when you do. Um, and music and sound and film so emulates the emotions on screen and it helps to connect the people sitting in the audience to the people on the screen or the people who, who are making the thing. Um, so it, it really has that purpose of engaging all those different parts of yourself um, because if it didn't then you wouldn't as you wouldn't enjoy the film as much as you did. Um, so I really liked like how the how to train your dragon uh, score um, is really fantastic. What about it? Um, it's the story is really simple, but the film score reveals complexities in it that the audience wouldn't feel, wouldn't see. That there is a certain amount of joy that is conveyed through the music, through the through the composition of that. And it's like the the non deep, the unspoken. Um, yeah, and the, the things that go without words, the things that can't be communicated with language can be communicated with music, can be communicated with the score, um, that there's, there's still space outside of language um, that can't be filled in any other way than with music. It was a pleasure to spend this short time with Emma and learn a little bit about what it's like to be a music and film student at Mount Holyoke and I wish her nothing but success in the future.